Welcome back to True Crime News. Let's jump right into the news. Brendan Bassey, a 27-year-old man, gained national attention with the Netflix documentary Making a Murderer. Federal judge ordered that Brendan, who has been incarcerated since March 2006, should be released from jail. But his release has been called into question because Wisconsin Attorney General plans to file an emergency motion to block the release. It since came to the news that federal appeals court has blocked Brandon Dassey's release. Dassey and his uncle Stephen Avery were sentenced to life terms in 2007 for the murder of photographer Teresa Halbach. Police may have unwittingly solved the mystery of a suspected serial killer after they shot a man dead. After James Dale Ritchie refused to pay a taxi fare and walked away, the police were called, and when the officers approached the 40-year-old man, he opened fire on the police. The police returned the fire at Ritchie, and once the situation was under control, the officers made attempts to save the man, but he died at the scene. When ballistic tests was run on the weapon, it was linked to a series of murders. Richie's gun, a Colt Python 357 revolver, was used in two double murders and in a fifth killing in the city this year. The bodies of the four victims of the double murders were reportedly all found along bike trails, while the killer stole the fifth victim's bicycle. At least four other people are said to have been killed under similar circumstances, bringing the number of related murders in the city to nine. Timothy J. Wafiets has been sentenced to 20 years behind bars. Timothy became known as the Vampire Trucker as he has been kidnapping and abusing at least six women over a period of two decades. The kidnapped women was held in his truck, which he has nicknamed the Twilight Express, after the book and movies. He raped the women on a daily basis, forbid them from talking to other people. He even controlled how and when they were allowed to use the bathroom. He would alter the women's appearances to match some ideal he held attempting to make them all look the same. He would cut and dye their hair and grind down their teeth in an attempt trying to fix what he saw as flaws in their looks. Only one of Timothy's victims spoke out publicly. She was known as Victim B. She told details about the daily abuse and about Timothy's vampire obsession, where he wore fangs and photoshopped images of himself with coffins. Timothy claims to regret his actions and wanted everyone in the courtroom to know how badly he feels for what he did. He should have said, I am sorry for my life. I am sorry for not recognizing myself and what a monster I am. When Timothy is released from prison, he will remain on supervised release for the rest of his life. The body of the 26-year-old Joseph Kumale, who was reported missing by his father after Joseph had been to a party in Midtown Manhattan, has been found buried in a shallow grave. Joseph, who goes by the name Joey, was discovered in a wooded stretch on the Jersey Shore. Law enforcement sources claim that Joey was stabbed multiple times and his body was put in a suitcase before it was buried. Besides, authorities found a pair of pants they believe belongs to Joey and bloody sheets were also found inside a garbage bag near the apartment building. Police are looking at James Ragover, who is the adopted son of famed jeweler Jeffrey Ragover, who has designed bowbells for Jennifer Lopez and was responsible for Melanie Trump's $3 million engagement ring. Stephen Dean Gordon and another sex offender Frank Cano were wearing GPS tracking devices for prior offenses when they worked together to randomly target women in 2013 and 2014. Gordon is charged 
with raping and killing four women while he wore an electronic monitor. One body was found at a recycling plant, while the remains of three other women haven't been found. Jurors were showed a series of texts between Gordon and Carno. The men used the word cats to refer to their victims. In one case, Carno used the phrase happy hand, which is said to refer to strangling a victim. Gordon is acting as his own attorney, and he declined to make an opening statement. The case is compared to the movie Jaws, as it's about predators, and this case is about two predators hunting together. For more information, look in the description and find relevant links to articles. If you don't want to miss out on any crime news, follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and of course, subscribe to our channel.